We were t- uh, talking to Andy Capistanio out of South Africa. And we'll play you this interview in about half an hour. Um, and <laughs> talk about time zones and things. And, you know, Lachlan's on the phone jacking it up. And he says to me, oh, I mean, he's, he's, um, he's listening to cricket. I said, what the hell? What do you mean? What kind of game of cricket's on at the moment, mate? No, that's I'm not watching cricket. I'm listening to cricket. So I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm in sorry. my god. Can you hear the night creatures around me? Hang on, just to go get quiet again, we'll go. And come on, you little buggers. <laughs> yes, I can, Andy. <laughs> wow. How big are they? Oh well, you're hearing frogs and crickets and um cicadas. Um uh, we might even get a jackal if we're lucky. Wow, okay. Do you get mosquitoes and all of those nasty ones as well? Oh yes, yes. Oh, there's a snake in front of me. Oh, it's a, it's a herald. Don't worry, not dangerous. No, well, I tell you what. I used to work alongside the herald, and they're all snakes. Bada boom. Uh, <laughs> this is a red-lipped herald. Yeah, I tell you what. That's what they're like. They, they know they come in all fancy, mate, but they got a sharp, forked tongue. Oh, look, I'm just being stupid. <laughs> Bomb. Hey, the other thing is, is that just so, right. that, so that people know, hey, you have you have lions and, and kind of tigers and elephants and, and all of those animals wandering around your property, don't you? Um, not lions, but um, yeah, we get the odd um, the odd leopard. Really? Um, uh, we, we get a lot of buck. Um, so reed buck, um, dacre. Those are the those are the two common ones. A little bit of bush buck. Okay. Um, but um, yes, I'm actually stood um, outside my house, looking up to the forestry, and uh, that's where the action happens at this time of night. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and and do you have patrol dogs out there? Do you slavering and savaging wild beasts? I've got I've got my two Dobermans with me, but they're asleep at the moment. Right. Straight into it we go. Andy Capistano, who we spoke to uh, this morning, about to reveal for us the real reasons behind why Rassi Erasmus does his Twitter referee outburst. So I started it by simply saying, look, here we are. We've wrapped up our season. We're just wondering what your thoughts are so far. Where does South African rugby sit? And how do you assess the box on the results that you've had so far on the Northern Hemisphere Tour? Well, I think probably people are looking back three years and thinking that um, history is about to repeat itself, that New Zealand have softened up England nicely in the semi-final, and now uh, South Africa will will win the final, just as they did in Tokyo in 2019. Um, What they really needed was that run out against um, Italy, because they played two really good sides in successive weeks, um, games that they, as you say, they could have won, but they didn't win. What they really needed was to just express themselves, remind themselves what they're capable of. Um, and I think they'll be too good for England this week. Yeah, OK. So are you, are you, are you happy to absorb the losses? Do the losses mean that much to you as South African rugby fans as they as they hurt us here? Or, or are you able to kind of look at them with a more holistic attitude and go, OK, uh, what did we get out of that? What are we building towards? Yeah, well, I think um, uh, we're building towards the obvious thing, which is repeating the win, just as New Zealand did in the in the two World Cups before 2019. Um, so the bigger picture is, yeah, a defeat is never a good thing. And there are always people, who, uh, particularly on Twitter, who become suicidal in the Republic when the Springboks lose any game. Um, but I think the overview is that they're, they're saying you're happy to lose those games now, knowing that you are good enough to win them when the World Cup rolls around in a year's time. And are you? Are you tracking that way, do you think? I do. I do. I really do. Um, I think we've uh, we've added a lot of quality to the side um, in the last 12 months. Um, there's a huge amount of depth. Um, and, and, you know, before the tour started, people were saying, well, you haven't got Pollard at fly half. You know, who's going to kick goals? Um, who's going to open up defences for you? And and what's happened is that young players have stepped up to the plate. Someone like Marnie Libok, who would not have been in in the top 60 players a year ago, um, comes off the bench and makes an enormous difference in his first two test matches. Um, uh, Willemser, who can play fly half, centre or fullback, 
um, has looked a quality player ever since I did him at Craven Week um, as a schoolboy. Um, and, and now he's fulfilling that. But I think the important thing, if you look at what happened um, in uh, the Italy game, is the axis is scrum half, Faf um, de Klerk, and fullback Vili LaRue. And if those two guys are on their game, South Africa can score tries. And if they can score tries, they're going to beat anybody. Okay, um, <clears throat> discipline problems, are they an issue with the cards uh, or is that just something that all teams are adjusting to? Because what the players aren't figuring out and still it doesn't seem like they're figuring out is that the referees are going to ref these rules the way that they have been told to ref these rules. And if you don't, uh, you know, <laughs> comply, abide by, you are going to get carded and then, you know, crazy things can happen. You lost to France, we just about lost to England. Yeah, um, and and I think the onus is upon um, all teams, not just South Africa and New Zealand, to come to terms with the way that the law is now written. I mean, oh, can you hear those wonderful noises around me? I can, right? mate. Yes, I That's can. That's frogs. It's 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 not it's not my tummy tummy rumbling. It is frogs. Well, they're um, well, how, and, how, uh, how, 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 how bloody big are those things? Oh, um, uh, well, actually, you know, um, it might not even be technically a frog. It's probably a toad. He's stopped now because I've actually walked up a bit closer to him. Okay. Um, about the size of a man's hand, typically. Wow. Good Lord. All right. Okay. Well, keep going. We, 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 we were into the cards, weren't we? We were talking about the cards. Yeah, um, and and discipline um, is the be all and end all when you when you get to a competition like the World Cup. So um, uh, I think that um, Rassi Erasmus is as a master tactician who goes on Twitter and pulls the piss out of world rugby and their refereeing standards just so that he knows how far we can go, and and that will I think really benefit South Africa. Um, this time next year, um, when they repeat as world champions, is there a method to his madness? Then he obviously doesn't mind being sidelined for a couple of weeks, does he? He kind of he, he he comes across, or he likes to think he comes across as some kind of martyr for the cause. That's for sure. I think you have to remember that he stepped away after the World Cup and Jacques Ninaba is the coach of the side, and I think that 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 was a masterstroke from Rassi because it means that he can do stupid things um, and and find out where where the the barriers lie and and dear old Jacques Nina but I mean people kind of forget that he's in charge I'm, I'm sure there's times when people are expecting Rassi to turn up at the press conferences and he's not there and they're thinking oh uh, I thought he was the coach. No, he's not the coach. He's uh, occasionally he's the water boy. Um, but uh, but I, I think that um, he he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, I I I go all the way back with Rassi to um, commentating on him as a young man. He he was always in control. He always understood the game far more than the rest of the players around him. And when he became a coach and started out with these crazy things like sitting on the roof and flashing lights to tell the players what to do um, he was pushing the barriers and that's exactly what he's doing on Twitter Andy Capistano an old mate broadcast out of South Africa and we've had him on the show for a couple of decades now it's interesting you say that because as soon as I saw his first comments I went straight to his Twitter and he doesn't follow anyone he's got over 100,000 people that follow him might even be more now but he doesn't follow anyone <laughs> and I saw that as an obvious sign I thought hang on a second this guy's up to something here. he don't care what anyone thinks he's just putting it out there Yes, that's absolutely right. Absolutely right. And um, he cops a lot of criticism. Um, but at the end of the day, what he's doing is to try and find out how far South Africa can go. Um, and I think he's also shaking the tree for everybody else. He's saying, come on, the way that these laws are being administered is wrong. We all know it's wrong. Um, somebody needs to put his head above the barricades and call out world rugby for some complete nonsense that's going on. I'm going to be that guy. Finally, then, as in terms of the European sides, um, you know, we had Chris Jones on yesterday. He still thinks it's Ireland, France, and then basically it's just a big ruckus to who are the two best teams in the world following that. I mean, we're in there, you're in there, England in there. Where do you see? Where do you see the currently? Who, 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 who are the top three right now? Um, I, I, yeah, I don't think you can put, look past Ireland and France. Um, they, they've been there. They've done that. Uh, France have won 10 games in a row. 
um, which they've never done in their history. That's uh, I remember my father-in-law uh, who played uh, test rugby for England in the 60s saying that, that everybody lived in fear of the day that France got it together because they had so much talent um, and they have got it together. Um, whether they can um, deal with the pressure that's going to come their way with, with, with hosting a World Cup next year, I'm not certain. I've seen enough of France to know that on any given day, they can beat anybody and lose to anybody. Um, so I, I feel that they're not going to do it. They're not going to um, play at home and win. Um, and therefore, it'll come down to one of the four that you've mentioned. Um, I can't I can't see a team outside of, uh, of the top five. I certainly can't see the Wallabies, um, even though the Wallabies tend to sort of get things together for World Cups. I just think that um, uh, losing to Italy um, was probably the nadir. And and they'll probably, you know, the coaching staff will probably fall on their swords before the next World Cup. Um, so, yeah, it, it does. And, and then it comes down to uh, what what's the draw like? Who's going to who's going to play who on on any given day? Um, who's going to win the World Cup? 